Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos. And today I'm on Moravia Road near Bel Air Road in Northeast Baltimore. And behind me is the Most Holy Redeemer Cemetery. It's been here since 1882, we're going to talk about that today. As well as the enormous First Chapel, F-U-R-S-T, uh, that's inside the cemetery. Um, and a number of the notable figures who are interred here, including a sports stars, Babe Ruth's mother, the last person killed in combat in World War I. We'll get to those, uh, but let's start with the cemetery first. And a quick word of thanks to a gentleman who watches our videos, Fred Lohn, who suggested this uh, topic. So thanks, Fred. All right, the cemetery, Most Holy Redeemer. The Redeemer is for the Redemptorists, the Redemptorist Order of Priests and Brothers. Got their start in the 1700s outside of Naples, Italy. Uh, a priest named Alphonsus Liguori uh, got them started with a mission largely to serve the poor something that they continue to do to this day. We got our first Redemptorist priests uh, in America in the uh, 1830s, and we got our first priests, uh, Redemptorist priests in Baltimore, largely through St. Wenceslas Church. We did a video on that a few weeks ago, if you'd like to, to learn more on that. Um, the cemetery got its start really as a joint venture between two churches, St. Michael the Archangel on Lombard Street. Some of you may have been there uh, today as the Ministry of Brewing. It got converted into a a brew pub. And the second church was uh, St. James the Last, uh, the enormous church next to the former Institute of Notre Dame in East Baltimore, uh, whose large uh, spire tragically and dramatically got struck by lightning uh, a few years ago. So those two churches started this cemetery with, uh, with a, a charter from the General Assembly. Uh, and uh, so let's jump into who uh, is buried here. A number of sports figures, including a gentleman named William Saul. He was a football player with the Colts uh, and the Steelers. Sorry, also went with the Steelers. Um, he did uh, a lot of notable things, but one of them was uh, he was the first football player to uh, wear a live uh, microphone during a game. The NFL began uh, experimenting with live audio recordings uh, with William Saul. Uh, in addition to Saul, another sports figure is Babe Ruth's mother, uh, born Catherine Schaumberger. Um, she was the mother of ch uh, seven children, although only Babe, the oldest, and one sister survived uh, to adult. Adulthood. She was uh, sick most of her adult life and in 1912 entered into a tuberculosis hospital here in Baltimore, uh, sadly dying 10 days later. For many years, she was buried here in an unmarked grave uh, until the early 2000s when a gentleman named Paul Harris, uh, a baseball lover himself, uh, started digging into things to find out what was going on with Babe Ruth's mother and this unmarked grave. And eventually in 2008, uh, in a partnership with the Babe Ruth Museum downtown uh, near Camden Yards, uh, they raised enough money to give her a proper uh, gravestone. Um, in a non-sports related uh, world, the one other notable gentleman buried here is uh, a, a man named uh, Henry uh, Gunther. Gunther was the last person uh, killed in combat in World War I. He was born in Baltimore of German stock, inducted into the army uh, to go fight over in France. On the very last day of fighting, his uh, troop encountered German machine gunners. His captain said, everybody stay down, and for reasons that we don't really know, uh, he disobeyed that order and ran at the machine gunners with his bayonet. The, the German machine gunners tried to wave him back. Uh, he kept running and was killed at 10.59 a.m. on November 11th, 1918, uh, exactly uh, one minute before the armistice. General Pershing recorded him uh, as the last American uh, combat fatality, and he was, in fact, the last uh, Allied fatality. He was buried in France for a few years, but in 1923 was re interred uh, here in Baltimore to uh, the cemetery behind me and in 2010 got a memorial plaque uh, for his role in World War uh, World War one so if uh, uh, Catherine Ruth and uh, mr. Gunther were maybe the most poignant stories certainly the most dominant physical feature in the cemetery is the enormous mausoleum the first memorial chapel um, it was is named for Frank first and his wife Elizabeth who are interred there Frank was born in Baden Germany uh, in the early 1800s, came over to Baltimore and in the Civil War enlisted for the Union Army, I believe as a cartographer, he's in the cartographer unit, uh, but
but saw a battle in the bat saw uh, combat in the Battle of Bull Run, where I think he was almost killed. After the war, he went on to work for the Northern Central Railroad, working his way up to become superintendent, and then founded a company called the Maryland Dredging and Contracting Company uh, that, among other, among other things, dredged uh, the shipping channels for Baltimore and Norfolk. In 1915, he was part of an effort uh, to dredge the Everglades in Florida. Back then, I think that was considered progress. Um, a few words about the chapel. It is cruciform in style, like a cross, and measuring 40 feet by 50 feet, it is one of the largest mausoleums in the country. Uh, from its great copper dome on the inside hangs uh, a perpetual light that is always uh, always kept lit. Um, the architect was a gentleman named Francis Torme. Um, among other churches, he built the fantastic St. Bernadine's Church in West Baltimore. At a cost of $100,000 in 1917, when this chapel was built, it came in with a hefty price tag. Um, in addition to Mr. and Mrs. First, uh, there are 60 redemptorist priests also uh, buried here. They were reinterred uh, really as a uh, remembrance of the role that the redemptorists played in uh, helping Frank First get his start in life here in Baltimore. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.